No fly box would be complete without a few woolly buggers. It's a, it's a great fly, great fish catcher for all species, all, all over the world now. Uh, there are many, many variations, and everybody's got their own special uh, style of, of tying uh, the bugger. Uh, it started, of course, with the good old woolly worm, an American pattern that was sometimes, some people described it as a caterpillar pattern, which it, I don't think it ever was, but it was a, a great halgramite pattern. The larva of the Dobson fly was a big buggy thing with lots of legs and fish sunk. And of course it was a, it was a great um, stonefly pattern before, well, probably about the same time as some, some of the big nymphs were being developed out in western states by people like Bud Lilly and Joe Brooks and these guys. Um, it's evolved, it takes many forms now and uh, I tie uh, several of them. They're all kind of related though. I'm tied with different materials that the woolly bugger uh, really doesn't have. The woolly worm had just a, a tag of, of uh, wool for a, you know, a butt. But uh, the genius that attached a clump of marabou to it really revolutionized it and fly fishing for a lot of people because suddenly people who had no idea of what fly fishing were about or, or just starting out could catch fish with this, with this great, very uh, lively lure. But now we use we use things like a rabbit strip, you know, which which can extend the length of it of the woolly burger and still give it some sub substance. Fantastic action on that. I still it's not technically a woolly burger, but I still sort of think of those as all buggers. Uh, the classic now, of course, is is a is a marabou tail. Very very the, probably the most lively material you can you can use. Uh, some people will add rubber legs, and I do. I think they're a, they're a fantastic invention for uh, tying flies now, we give for, just for providing uh, the suggestion of life. And you can add flash of, of various forms into the fly for as an extra sort of triggering element, especially if you're thinking, as I do, that it's primarily a bait fish imitation rather than any kind of insect. <clears throat> so what we'll do is, is uh, I think we'll... We'll tie just a, a standard woolly bugger now with a, an olive one because that's sort of the classic, um, and I'll tie it with a with the, a standard marabou tail. So the first thing I'll do is uh, pack some lead wire into the rear cavity of that uh, tungsten bead. It's not not really for weight; it's just to center the bead again and get everything nice and straight on there. Keeps it out from sliding back on the hook. Put my tying thread up to that. Got a couple of lashes to hold everything together. Take my thread to the bend of the hook. And I will tie in some of this nice barred turkey marabou here. Now what I do on a big fly, or a much far larger fly than that, I might use almost that whole feather. I'll just take that center quill out of that double those over then you get a real wad of marabou if you really want some some presence to a, to a large fly this isn't quite that big of course so what we'll do this is a nice slender quill in this thing so we'll just pop that center quill out of there and we'll take about half that feather leaving the quill in it just makes it a little bit easier to handle it doesn't all come apart that keeps it all together sort of plume of marabou there and tie that in. Now what I do is I leave them long. Those, those uh, very fine tips on marabou really provide a tremendous amount of action as you're working the fly through. And we want, to, we want a little bit of bulk to this body so I'm just going to wrap all the, the sort of the waist ends of that. So rather than clipping them off back there I'm just going to add them to the bulk of the body. Now <clears throat> what is now probably the classic or uh, uh, original woolly bugger, of course, has a, has a palmered um, saddle hackle. Uh, I'm not really partial to these um, uh, using hackles on large lures like this because really I'm thinking of this for, for larger fish. They've always got teeth and the hackles last a fish, basically. Is, so that, that's, that's a bit of an issue if you're tying these things. So. So what I do now is I just give myself a nice a dub body and something with some length in it. So that's a bit of uh, mohair. Um, 
as you can hear, it's got quite a long staple. So, but I might add some, a little bit of flash to it if I want just a bit. So sometimes I just strip, strip the core off, something like that, which is a bit of sort of cactus chenille. Just pinch and pull that into, into your dubbing. It just gives a little extra sparkle to the dubbing. And I just dub that directly onto my, you can use a dubbing loop, you know, I've got one. I never use it because I'm too lazy to set it up and do all that fussing around. What I like to do, for a couple of reasons, not just simply laziness, although that's part of it, is to direct dub right onto the right onto the shank. That tends to make the, the dubbing go on just a, a shade loose. There's no question the dubbing loop would lay that uh, more tightly than that. But I make up for that pretty quickly by taking my thread right back down the body like that. Right? And then up again, and there's my there's my rib. And now what I might do there now is is probably the time to, or you can do it sort of halfway up the body. You can add a couple of rubber legs to that. And I use I usually tie my my rubber, rubber legs in like that, just in a in a bunch, and just separate the the loop on that end. And you can just spread those or spread those around the hook a bit like that if you want. This is, this is going to be a see what's going to happen there. This is almost like a bass bug, isn't it, or something with lots of leggy stuff. I don't really know what that imitates, but I tell you what, it looks like something that's live. That's and that's a fact. So we'll just add a bit more of this this uh, dubbing with a little more of this flashy stuff in it. Just as a bit of a collar to that. So now some people are saying, well, that's not really a woolly bugger, that's that's something else. Right? Um, but I defy anyone to tell me just what a woolly bugger really is <laughs> in the first place. But so I'm not really interested in in conventional uh, patterns here as much as I am as, as creating a lure with plenty of life in it. It's got the basic uh, shape of, of a bait fish, but this could, this could be a lot of things that live down in the depths of, of uh, a lake. Uh, that's going to have loads of action. That's actually, I, I think that's probably too many legs on that fly. I don't like the look of it. I like it's a little bit sparse there. That's a little better. And now what I would do is I would just either take a needle or I just use my scissors because they happen to be in my hand and just pick out some of that dubbing. Another thing you do is take a, a bit of Velcro to that, just rough it up. And what that does, without providing any any real weight or giving making that fly even denser than it is, which of course makes it a little bit easier to cast if it's not too heavy on a long leader. And that'll catch that'll catch trout.